Following Joe Biden, Harris, I would suspect that there will be very little, if anything, said, because anything that they say will be deemed to be hypocritical in terms of what this administration stands for, in terms of increasing penalties for offering a false statement in support of a gun application. Uh, and, you know, that and, and commenting on this case is not going to do Joe Biden any good, other than if he's looking for sympathy. But I want to say one thing that mm. I think is very important, and that is that that the fact that Jill Biden wasn't there, the fact that the whole family or not everyone was aware that the verdict was coming back, really tells me that they were kind of, you know, thinking that maybe this show of force in terms of the Biden family being front row staring down the jury would intimidate the jury, because anyone who understands the criminal law, and that's most of the people that you've been talking to in the last few minutes, knows that this case was an open and shut case. And I think that there even leaving, recognizing the significance of this, is indicative of the fact that they thought, well, maybe we'll get away with it. We've got time. No, this jury and this judge, were they were not going to waste any time. And the judge didn't even say, should we wait for anybody? This is a no-nonsense judge who took this case, showed America how a case works, and moved it right from opening statement to verdict. Uh, I want to get back to something that you just mentioned, and that was penalties in this case. With all of your experience on the bench, and I realize it's a different state, you were right. in New York and this is right. Delaware, what likely will happen with somebody who doesn't have a prior? You know, usually when someone doesn't have a prior, it's a non a nonviolent crime. Uh, you know, the, the, there's a lot of consideration given to the defendant. However, the fact that this defendant didn't plead guilty and indicate that he was remorseful is something that allows a federal judge, in terms oh. of the sentencing guidelines, to take that into consideration. So, you know, had he pled guilty, he probably would, you know, there would be no question about jail time. Now, maybe, you know, maybe they can give a few months or whatever it might be. That's now totally up to the judge. But he's not in the best position, given the fact that he took this case, which was a straightforward case to trial, and started arguing crazy stuff like alcohol or there was no cocaine on the counter when he applied for the permit. Well, there is on YouTube. Like, <laughs> there is cocaine on some, <laughs> yeah. on some, you know, furniture there, yeah. but okay. Judge, I'm so glad. You, you always give us that jumping off point. So I'm going to welcome now Trey Gowdy, former federal prosecutor, former South Carolina congressman, and host of Sunday Night in America right here on Fox News Channel. So he didn't plead guilty and he didn't express remorse, is what Judge Janine Pirro just said. Talk to me about looking, you've seen juries your whole career. Why does that play a role? It plays a role in federal cases. Of course, you know, President Trump was prosecuted in state court. This is a whole different universe. This is federal court. We have guidelines. And, and you get credit for what we call acceptance of responsibility. It's really not remorse. I guess maybe that's a synonym, but it's acceptance of responsibility. So you have guidelines. He has no criminal history. He has a certain offense code. And then you get a reduction based on certain factors, including whether or not you pled guilty and accepted responsibility. So you don't get punished for going to trial. You just don't get the reward well, for accepting responsibility. Having said that, the guidelines are all advisory, Harris. They're no mm -hmm. longer mandatory. This judge can do whatever she wants to do. Uh, and, you know, in moving forward, we saw Hunter Biden really thirsty for a trial. I, I want to go to Leo Terrell now. Um, that whole stunt on Capitol Hill where he shows up to a hearing. He, and then we learned he was making some kind of a documentary. I wonder if this will go in the documentary. Um, but, Leo, politics have always been part of this. <laughs> yes, Harris. And you know what? He's never faced justice before. He's been shielded, protected. You talked about that stunt on Capitol Hill, his defiance. You know, this case was so overwhelming. How often do you have a case, and these, my colleagues can tell you this, where you're convicted with your own words, where you have family members who are forced to tell the truth. You have objective individuals and a jury doing the right thing. Hunter Biden is now in reality. He now has to face the music like every other American because the Biden family, the proximity of the case where it was located, did not protect him, did not save him. 
him. So he's going to have to face the music. I think that's good for justice. I'm a big favor, opponent, supporter of legal rule of law. And that's what happened today, Harris. Uh Andrew, if you can, talk to me about what happens next with Hunter Biden just today. So, so what does his life look like? Are they going through strategy for appeal? What, what happens? Well, this is the tip of the iceberg for him. <clears throat> you know, he's going to sit down with his uh, attorneys. They're going to talk a little bit about what happens next. But I think they change their focus almost immediately to that September tax trial. That's going to be the next big uh, ticket for him. And that's going to be so much bigger than this. Remember, we were just talking about October of 2018 in this trial and how much they were able to bring in. Now we're going to be talking about years and years in the mid uh, 2000 and teens about all that was going on. I think that the, the family is likely and, and sure to see so much more in terms of that embarrassing detail. All right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.